Well, hello everyone and welcome to this week's math problem. Today's problem appeared in an MIT admission test in the year 1869. So why are we talking about this problem today? Well, firstly I think the problem is beautifully worded. More importantly, the problem will test your geometry skills and is fun and interesting to solve. As always, I will first introduce the problem to you. Then please pause the video and try solving it yourself. Once you are done, you can return to see two solutions to this problem. And yes, please post your comments since that will benefit everyone. So here goes today's problem. The perpendicular dropped from the vertex of the right angle upon the hypotenuse divides it into two segments of 9 and 16 feet respectively. Find the length of the perpendicular and the two legs of the triangle. Okay guys, your time starts now and don't forget to return for the solution. Alright, so now on the basis of this problem, let us draw our triangle. So we'll start by drawing the perpendicular uh, onto the hypotenuse and let's also now draw the other two sides. And let's put in the right angles where they exist. So we have three out here. And as you can see, these two segments are nice, 9 feet, not nice, 9 feet and 16 feet respectively. And I'm going to use X, Y and Z. Uh, these are the unknowns that we need to calculate. So our first method in solving this problem is based on the fact that we have three uh, right angle triangles. So we are going to use the Pythagoras theorem to arrive at an answer. Right, so here's our figure once again. So let's first tackle this triangle. So we can say using Pythagoras theorem that y square is equal to x square plus 9 square. And now going to this triangle out here, we can say z square is equal to x square plus 16 square. And finally going to this outer triangle here and seeing that the hypotenuse is 25, we can say 25 square is equal to y square plus z square. And now we have three equations. So let's add uh, the values on either side and cancel things as necessary. And that leaves us with 625 is equal to 2x square plus 81 plus 256. So we can solve for x and that gives us x square is equal to 144 or x is equal to 12. And now that we know the value of x, let's solve for y. So we get y is equal to 81 plus 144, which gives us y equal to 225 or y is equal to 15. And similarly, let's solve for z or z. So that gives us z square is equal to 400 or z is equal to 20. So to summarize, we have x is equal to 12, y is equal to 15, and z or z is equal to 20. Uh, so in this second approach, we are not going to attack the problem directly as we did in the first, but we are going to put a bit more thought into it so I am going to introduce you to a new concept out here, and that is the similarity of triangles. Assume we have two uh, right angle triangles out here. As you can see, they have different lengths, but their angles are equal. So these triangles would be similar, and we can say that since they are similar, their corresponding sides are all in the same proportion. So what does this mean? So let's assume we have x, y, and z being the lengths of the first triangle sides and abc being the lengths of the second triangle. So we can say that x upon a, which are the sides opposite the 30 degree angle, is equal to y upon b and that ratio is equal to a z or z upon or by c. Okay, so just pause here and, and, and make sure that this concept sinks in. And once it has, so we will use this concept in trying to solve our, our problem. So going back to our problem, uh, I'm sorry, this diagram is not very clear, but let's try to figure out the angle. So this is x, this angle is 90 minus x, this angle out here is x, and again, this angle out here is 90 minus x. So as you can see, both triangles have the same angles, and by the AAA postulate, or the angle, angle, angle postulate, we can say y by 16, and y and 16 are the sides opposite x degrees, and this ratio is equal to 9 by y. 
So please make sure that you understand this. And by this logic, we can say that y square is equal to 16 by 9 or y is equal to 12. Now armed with this uh, answer, let's go back to this triangle out here. And as we can see, it is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So it's a Pythagoras triplet. It's a form, a very popular form of a Pythagoras triplet where this, where the length of the sides are in the ratio 3, 4, 5. So that's pretty straightforward then. So we can immediately say that the hypotenuse is 5 times 3 and that is 15. Okay, so let's use the same logic out here. And in this case, I'll be in a bit more, I'll provide a bit more detail. So as you can see, these sides are 12 and 16, and it can be rewritten as 3 by 4 for 12, and 4 by 4 for 16. And similarly, by this logic, again, a 3, 4, 5 triplet, we can say that the hypotenuse is 5 times 4, which is 20. So as you can see, we did not use, uh, I mean, it's, it's debatable, but I feel that the calculations were much more straightforward out here in this case. But of course, we needed to know a bit more concepts, the concepts of Pythagoras theorem in the first place, and also similarity of triangles, and also the 345 Pythagoras uh, triplet. Yeah, one last thing, guys, before going, I would like to give a big shout out to King Temple, a fellow YouTuber who has been encouraging us all the way. So thanks once again. Do check out his channel and subscribe. So guys, if you liked the video, do not forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you're using the YouTube app, click the bell icon to get notifications from Funza Academy. My name is Sanjay and I make weekly math videos. Thanks a lot and bye for now.